is uh, we apologize for, for being late. I had um, I had uh, difficulty setting up uh, the equipment and getting things started for you all. So I apologize for, uh, for the lateness. Um, I want to make sure that everyone can see and hear us clearly. So if people can respond to let us know whether they hear us and see us clearly, we would appreciate that. Okay, can everyone see us and hear us clearly? Can everyone hear us clearly? Something's going on with the volume. I don't have it. The volume is low, is it? Loud and clear. Okay. Okay, so y'all can see us clearly, and y'all can um, hear us clearly for the most part, right? Okay, everyone's saying Kun. Another brother saying loud and clear. Once again, um, I apologize uh, just for getting uh, started late. Um, Elder Recall, Elder Lawyer, uh, wasn't able to uh, do uh, Sabbath service this uh, Shabbat. Um, I, I, want, I would like for everyone to definitely send a strong prayer up for Elder Lawyer. He's fine, his wife is fine. Um, just one of his uh, great ancestors um, passed away. So, uh, you know, he was not able to, uh, to uh, attend class today, okay? So me and uh, Brother Malak is going to deal with Shabbat service today. Okay, so we're going to do the Lord's Credo, and then we're going to get started. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Shema Yasha Allah, a higher Allah, a higher Nava, a higher Aka. Okay, here, O Israel, the Lord, thy, thy power is one. He wrote okay. Israel, the Lord our God is one. Salam. Okay, so today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is going to be on uh, us being not dismayed at the signs of heaven, okay? A lot of brothers and sisters have been sending us emails with uh, different um, content and different video uh, posts or productions about, um, about Revelation, the 12th chapter, okay? And it all deals with astrology. It all comes from astrology. And that's something that the Bible teaches against, okay? The Most High says for us not to deal with soothsaying, not to deal with uh, procrastinators, not to deal with familiar spirits. And also Jeremiah said for us not to be dismayed at, with the signs of heaven. And it seems as if that seems to be a fad now. And it seems as if people are being dismayed by the signs of heaven. Okay, so we're gonna go over a, uh, a short lesson for the most part on how to look out for, uh, how to make sure that we don't get caught up in the hoopla about dealing with the signs of heaven and looking too far into the stars, okay? So let's start with, um, let's get Matthew's, the second chapter, because this is one of the scriptures that's being, uh, being used also to, to support this, uh, this theory and this concept of uh, looking and anticipating uh, uh, Yeshaya's uh, second coming uh, through the stars. Give me one moment. Okay, let's also let me mention this too. Um, what people are saying also is that this they're saying that there's going to be signs in the heaven, and there is going to be signs in the heaven. But the particular signs that people are looking at today are not the signs that we should be looking for. 
Okay, Yeshua told us about the signs that we should look for. So one of the key scriptures they're using amongst a few other scriptures is Matthew's the second chapter when it says that the uh, that, that there was a star in heaven. Okay, so let's get Matthew's the second chapter. Let's start from uh, verse one, two, and one. Matthew chapter two, verse one. Mm -hmm. Now, when Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea. In the days Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of, to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. Right, so the wise men said that they had seen Yeshua's star in the east. And we realized that the stars are angels. Okay, so we have to be careful about what star we're looking at. Okay, be and our what star this is, rather? Read. And are come to worship him. Mm -hmm. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Mm -hmm. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Right. Now, this is interesting because when he gathered the scribes and the priests together, they didn't know where Christ was born at this time. But the wise men saw the star. So they saw the, the, uh, the sign, okay, or the guiding light. I would like to call it that led them to where Yeshia was actually going to uh, be where, where um, Mary was actually going to give birth. OK, to Yeshia. OK, but everyone else in Jerusalem didn't see this. They didn't they didn't understand that what this event meant. Only these three wise men understood the event. It wasn't until the angels came and dealt with the shepherds is when everyone else understood because they wouldn't broadcast it that the, that the Messiah was here, was present. I'm going to show you that. Read verse five. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written of by the prophets. Mm -hmm. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea are not the least among the princes of Judah. Of Judah. Mm -hmm. For out of thee shall, shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Right. So according to the scriptures, they knew that Yeshua was coming, that a governor was coming. But they didn't know when and, it, and they didn't know how except that Mary of the prophecy of Mary uh, having this child. Read. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. So now this star that they saw, it went before them. So they were following the star, which is a guiding light. The same way how when we were in, in our forefathers were in the wilderness and they saw and the, the, Yeshia was in the pillar in, of the cloud and he led us through the wilderness. So this is the same uh, instance that's taking place. So it was actually an angel. OK, that was the star that they saw. OK, it had nothing to do with astrology and going up into the cosmos. OK, read. Till it came and stood over where the young child was. Right. So the star, which the angel came in, it stood over where the young child was. All right. Read. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Mm -hmm. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child would marry his mother and fell down and worshiped him. OK, stop right there. Let's go to Luke, the second chapter. Luke 2, the second chapter. And we're going to start from the first chapter. Luke 2, the second chapter. And we're going to start from the first verse. And we're going to get another account. Let's start from, let's start from verse 1. Luke chapter two verse one, mm -hmm. and it came to pass in those days that there were that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own house, into his own city, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, mm -hmm. unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, 
the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth she she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and said him and, and laid him in a manger. Okay, so at this point Yeshua is born. He's in the earth. Okay, read. Because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. So now these are the shepherds who were in the same country, in the same vicinity, the same city, because it's Bethlehem. Okay? And they so they witnessed a particular event. Okay? And a lot of people take this, they could have took this for an astronomical event, but they knew what it was. They realized that it was angels, but it was something about the presence of the angels that it was the, the uh it was the light and the power and the glory of the angels that overshadowed them. Okay? Read. Keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Most High came upon them, and the glory of the Most High shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Right, so when they saw this light, which was the angel, they became afraid because the, where they were standing at, that whole area was illuminated. So they were looking up in the sky as if it was, you understand, some like a chariot or something. Okay, read. Verse 10, and, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, mm -hmm. which shall be to all people. Right. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a right. Savior, mm -hmm. which is Christ the Lord. Right. And this shall be a sign unto and, you. And this shall be a what? And this shall be a sign unto you. And this shall be a what? And this shall be a sign unto you. Right. So this was the sign. The sign had nothing to do with astrology and the stars. The sign was physical. The sign was in the earth. Okay. Let's find out what the sign was. Read. And you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So that was the sign. The sign was them coming and finding Christ, Mary, and Joseph, and Christ, and, and, and uh, Yeshua, excuse me, in a manger with a newborn baby. That was the sign. That was the significance of, of, uh, of the star that they were seeing. And the light it had nothing to do, as I said before, with, with astrology. All right? Read. Verse 13, mm -hmm. and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising mm -hmm. the Most High. Right, so this had to be something, something was going on in the physical and also something was going on in the spiritual because they witnessed the glory of the angels in heaven. All right, read. And saying, glory to the Most High in the highest mm -hmm. and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels was going away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem. That's key. So when the angels left, they went up into heaven. So that was uh, viewed as like a phenomenon. They saw lights. They saw the power and the glory of the angels. Okay. It had nothing to do with the stars once again. Read. Let us, know, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. So now the wise men went to Bethlehem and they wanted to confirm what the angels told them. They wanted to look and go find this sign. All right, read. Which the Most High had made known unto us. Mm -hmm. And they came. And that's interesting. So the Most High made it known unto them. It wasn't man. It wasn't the stars. It wasn't the angels or the fallen angels. It wasn't them. Okay? Because what people, I wanted to say this too, because what's, what's going on is that a lot of this information that's being taught is, is actually information that comes from the fallen angels. It's a diversion. It's the same thing that they that they that uh that they're doing when it comes to the rapture deception. All this is a deception to get us to start looking up in the sky and, and contemplating what's going on in the heavens. And we're not supposed to be we're not supposed to concern ourselves about what's going on in the heavens. Okay? At this at this particular point. All right? Read. Verse 16. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph. In the babe lying in a manger. Mm -hmm. And when they had seen it. And this is interesting too. So they bear witness to the sign. The same way that John the Baptist bear witness to the sign of Yeshua. About who he was being the son of the most high. When the Holy Spirit ascended upon him after he baptized him. All right. Read. Verse 17. And when they had seen it. Mm -hmm. They made known abroad the same. Which was told them concerning this child. Right. So that's how it got out through all Judea. OK, once they bear witness to this sign, when the angels told them to go look for this sign, when they saw this sign, they went and they broadcasted it to everybody. And that's how people knew Yeshua was 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 in the world. OK, read verse 18. And all they that heard it wondered at those things 
which was told them by the shepherds. That's interesting, too, because they wondered about these things that was told by the shepherd. Because why? Just like the Pharisees, they didn't believe that, that, that the son of the Most High would come out of Nazareth because they were looking for this spectacular event. But he came in such a plain and humble state. He didn't come with lights flashing in, 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 in a purple and blue garment. He didn't come like that. He came plain, lowly and humble. OK, read verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mm -hmm. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, glorifying and praising the Most High for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Mm -hmm. Let's sit on that. Yeah. OK, let's go on to uh, let's get Exodus, the 13th chapter. Just to get a little more on the light. It's just a, some preliminary scriptures. Exodus 13 and um, let's start from verse 20. Exodus chapter 13, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. So this is us when we're, when we're in the wilderness. OK, and we, were, we were journeying from Sukkot, it says. And encamped in Etham, mm -hmm. in the edge of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And the Most High went before them by day in a pillar of a, of a cloud to lead them the way. Right, so this is what I mentioned earlier about how the, the pillar in the cloud or the angels led us through the wilderness the same way that it was an angel, or the guiding light, I call it, I like to call it, that led the wise men to the location where Yeshua would, would be born at. All right? Let's get um, Exodus 14 chapter and let's read verse 19 and 20. Exodus chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 19. And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians in the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by them by night to these. Right, so this is the same this is the same angel who when the Egyptians were pursuing us in Egypt, to them when the angel came between us, to, between our forefathers, all they saw was the darkness of, of this angel and we was able to see the light. Okay, and I want to touch base on that because I'm gonna go into the darkness and the light too when it comes to uh, <laughs> The, 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 uh, the fallen nature and state of man, okay? So let's move on. Let's get, um, let's get Revelations, the 12th chapter. Okay, because this is another scripture that they use, that they, this is the main scripture, the key scripture that they're using to say that uh, what's, what's happening in Revelations, the 12th chapter, is related to the stars, and it's not, all right? Now, I'm just going to read the first verse. I'm not going to break the whole chapter down because I'm dealing with limited time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, start from uh, 12 and 1. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, mm -hmm. a woman clothed with, with the sun, and the moon under her feet. Right, so there appeared a great wonder in heaven. There's a woman that's clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet. Now, in some of these videos and some of the teachings out there, they're saying that this woman is Mary. Okay? But the woman is not Mary. The woman is the nation of Israel. Okay? Bringing forth <laughs> Yeshaya and also bringing forth the children of Israel. Okay? Read. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Mm -hmm. And she being with child, cried, travail travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And there appeared a So let's stop right there. So let's get the precept. Get Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Actually, you know what? I want to go back to that. Let's finish that up before, before we go here. Start from uh, 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven.
behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns mm -hmm. and seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Right. So we know that this is the nations of the earth. We also understand that the dragon is Satan also. OK, read and did cast them to the earth. Mm -hmm. And so the this is Satan drawing the third part of the heaven and casting them to the earth, because at this particular time, there was a war that took place in heaven. It's going to tell you. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be, which was ready to be delivered. Right. So the dragon, Satan, stood before the woman, but he stood before us through man, through the different governing and ruling powers that tried to persecute us and afflict us during this period. From that period up until now, okay, the dragon is still standing against us. All right. Read. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Right. To devour her child as soon as it was born to kill Christ the same way there was an assault uh, to kill uh, Abraham. OK. The same way there was an assault to, for, uh, for Esau's sons to try and kill Jacob. It's always been a, an attempt by Satan working through the nations trying to destroy us and kill us. OK. And afflict the, the seed that we will come through. OK. Read. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child mm -hmm. who was to rule all nations. Right. And the man child that she brought forth, we all know, is Yeshaya. Okay. Who was to rule all nations. Read. With the rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And her child was caught up unto the Most High. Right. Into his throne. Right. That's when Yeshaya was crucified. Right. And caught up in, uh, to the Most High's throne. Read. Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness mm -hmm. where she had. A place prepared of the Most High. Right, that's us going into the wilderness. That they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days. Right, read. And there was a war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, mm -hmm. and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more. Right, this is key too, because I'm going to touch base on something in the book of Enoch that's going to go in, just touch a tad bit about how there was a war in heaven and how. Satan and his angels didn't have access into the heavens anymore. All right. Read. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, mm -hmm. and Satan, mm -hmm. which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Right. And I heard a, low, a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our power and the power of his Christ. Right. So through that. Through that, we, we, were able, we were able to get, excuse me, we were able to get salvation, okay, and gain power through Yeshaya. All right, read. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, mm -hmm. which accused them before our power day and night. Mm -hmm. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Right, by the blood of the Lamb through baptism, through accepting and embracing Yeshaya, right, and his teachings, read, his truth, read. And by the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And they love not their lives unto the death. Read. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Right, because Satan was all up in the heavens. That's why it says rejoice, ye heavens. So he didn't have access up there in that realm anymore. All right? So all, all his access was limited to the earth. All right? Read. In the sea, in of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Right, so because he got cast out of heaven now... He's in earth and he had great indignation and wrath against us, against the children of Israel. All right. Read. Because he knew it that he had a short time. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So that's why we're going through the things that we're going through as a, as a nation of people. That's why we've been through the things that we have experienced as a nation of people. And because of this. It's the whole earth is actually really suffering because of Satan's wrath, because of his indignation to get to us. Everybody is suffering because he's trying to stop us from being rebirthed and reborn. OK, read verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle mm -hmm. that she might flee into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Right. For the face of the from the face of the serpent. And a serpent cast out his mouth, water as a flood. Right, so this the, this flood is the falsehoods, it's the ideologies, it's the philosophies of this of the society of that period and also this period. All right, read. After the woman, that he might cause her to be cast to be carried away of the flood, and the earth helped the woman, 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Right, so the earth helped us with anthropology, with archaeology, okay? with the, uh, the scrolls found in the Crumb Room Caves and different other uh, artifacts and, and uh, manuscripts that, that are, are found in various parts of the earth. That information helped us to, uh, to re-educate ourselves to the truth, all right? Read. Verse 17, and a dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Right, so now Satan is making war with the remnant of her seed, which is us. So he's making war with us on many different levels. Okay, it's not just a physical war, it's a mental war, it's spiritual, uh, it's educational, uh, it's uh, with, with the health system. He's making war with us, he's making war with us on many different levels. All right, read. And he went and went, war to, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High. Right, because we're keeping the commandments of the Most High, and what else? And have the testimony of Yeshua Christ. And we have the testimony of Yeshua Christ. Now let's move on. Let's get uh, Mark the 13th chapter. I just want to touch base on a few other preliminary scriptures when it comes to this uh, dealing with the times. All right. Mark 13. So I'm going to come back. I know I didn't get an opportunity to touch base on the way I wanted to on the first scripture uh, in Revelation 12, 12 and 1. I want to touch base on that, but I just wanted to read through it. Okay. And just touch base on some key things. Okay, Mark 13 and 20. Mark chapter 13, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And except that the Most High, I mean, except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he has shortened those days. He mm -hmm. has shortened the days. Mm -hmm. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise. That's what I wanted to get. So false Christ and false prophets shall rise. Okay. And one of the uh, mediums that uh, that Rome, well, I don't want to say Rome, but uh, the uh, the people of today are using the Antichrist, the people who are against Christ and his truth, they're using the medium. Okay. Like uh, you read in, um, in the book of Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon, in the 12th chapter, they're using art magic. A lot of these productions that you see on TV and these videos, they're, they're productions. It's, it's, it's meant to entice you. It's meant uh, to have you gravitate towards it and, and be at awe when, when you see it. So they meticulously design these things to captivate your mind and your imagination. And that's what's happening with, with people who's going on these sites and viewing this information. I know I'm bouncing around, and I apologize. I just want to try to touch base on different things, okay? Read. Verse 22, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise. Right, and that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they're bringing forth false false prophecies. They're bringing forth, the, and they're mentioning these particular signs, which are not signs at all. If they're signs, they're signs that they're going to try to bring about themselves, okay, to to replicate what they think, what, what the most high signs should be. Okay, read. And shall, so, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible, even the elect. Right, so that's what's happening. So now, they're seducing us. We're being seduced with these videos the same way we've been seduced in an educational system. Okay, we're being seduced with the, with the, uh, with the movies, the magazines, these different advertisements. Okay, this is, this is, their, this is, this is their job, to, to, uh, to seduce us. All right, read. Verse 23, but take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But check it out. He said, take heed, because behold, I have foretold you all things. So we, we've been warned already that these things were going to come. So when we see different videos and see different things and we get uh, access to different information, we can't be moved in our spirits. Okay? We have to stick with the scriptures. Okay? Let the Most High be true and every man a liar. All right? Read Verse 24, mm -hmm. but in those days after that tribula tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. So that's interesting because they're using this scripture too. But all this stuff happens after the tribulation. This stuff is not happening now. 
This stuff is not going to happen next year. Everybody's always predicting when something is going to happen. They always have these predictions. But the Most High says, no man know the day nor the hour. But everyone have a prediction. All right. Read. And the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken. Right. So the stars in heaven shall fall and the powers that are in the heavens shall be shaken. All right. Read. Verse 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Right. So after the tribulation, that's when we're going to see Yeshua. We're not going to see him before that point. So everybody that's saying or people who's rather who's saying that's putting up these, these elaborate video productions is saying that he's anticipated to come this this year or that year or, or month or day that, that they're in error. They're wrong. They're actually really dealing with knowledge, with the knowledge of the fallen angels, because they taught these particular readings of the stars and the cosmos. That's what they did. That was that that was their purpose. OK. And it's all part of the strong delusion. Like how Elder Recall uh, brings up the, ra the rapture deception. It's all part of the deception to have us be at all in what's going on in space and, and, and not to have our focus on what's going on in, in, uh, in Earth or what's going on within us and ourselves. OK, but that's the key part of examination that we need to identify with. OK, read verse 27. Mm -hmm. And then shall he send his angels. Let's sit on that. Let's move on. I apologize. Let's get Matthew's 24th chapter. No, stay right there. We get go to verse 32. Excuse me. Something I want to pull out. That's going to segue me into my next scripture. Because I want to keep sticking on a point about these fallen angels dealing with astrology. I'm not going to. Y'all all have the, familiar with the book of Enoch, the eighth chapter. Y'all can read it. I'm not going to go too far into that because I don't want to mention these the, the names of these particular fallen angels. Okay. Verse 32. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Mm -hmm. But of that day and in that hour knoweth no man. Right. So of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Read. No, not the angels which are in heaven. That's interesting. He said, no, not the angels which are in heaven. And a lot of times we don't think about the negative angels or the wicked angels, they don't know it either. But they deal with people who uh, prognosticate and people who deal with wizardry and familiar spirits. And who are they communicating with? They're communicating with these angels. So you got to see both sides. The angels that's actually with Yeshaya, that's going to come back with them, they don't know when the order is going to be given either. But also, the other angels don't know either. The fallen angels don't know either. But they're acting like they know, and they're giving people these false prophecies and these false analogies. You understand? And people are teaching this information, like it's like it's like it's uh, like it's biblical, and it's not. It's not prophetics. Okay. Read. It says no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. Mm -hmm. Verse thirty-three. Take you heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. Right. So he's like a man who left his house and gave authority to his servants and allocated responsibility to everyone. And he'd come back when he want when he want to come back. You don't have to tell his servants when he's going to return. He'd come back when he wants to. And mo mo nine times out of ten, most of the time, it's a surprise when he come back. He come back unexpectedly. All right. Read. And commanded the porter to watch. Verse 35. Watch you therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. See that? So we don't know when he's coming back. But you have people with these predictions stating that they do know when he's going to come back. But we don't know when. Okay? But as I said before, they're dealing with these angels. Okay? These angels are giving them false revelation. Okay? Read. For well, you know not when the master of the house cometh at mm -hmm. even or at midnight or at, cock, cock, at the cock crowing. Right. So these are times. You don't know whether he's coming at even, at midnight or when the cock crow. Mm -hmm. You don't know. OK. No one knows whether he's coming this year, next year or the following few, few years. OK. Read. Or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to come and find us sleeping. Actually, he's going to come and find us stargazing. 
That's what he's going to come and do. He's going to come and find us stargazing. Okay? And, you know, sometimes I look up in the sky, too, because I admire the most how marvelous works. It's beautiful when you look up into the night, night sky and you see all the stars and you bear witness to his works and his creation. So I admire his work and I drew it from that aspect. I don't try to read it and try to make anything else out of it. Okay? Read. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Does that sit on that? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Let's get, um, let's get uh, Luke, the 21st chapter. Let's get that also. Mm -hmm. This is another scripture that they use also. And um, let's start from 25. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. So there are going to be signs in the sun and the moon. Okay? But those are not signs that we're supposed to concern ourselves about. Okay? These are actually really indicators. They're not signs. They're really indicators. All right? Mm -hmm. Read. And in the stars, mm -hmm. and upon the earth. The right. Read that again. And upon the earth, the stress. Right. So there is going to be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and it's just the stress upon the earth, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be dealing with. That's what we need to concentrate on. The distress that's upon the earth, the condition that our people are in. Mm -hmm. Okay? The different uh, uh, things that society is implementing on our people to destroy us. Those are the things we need to put our, pro our focus on when it comes to bearing witness to things and seeing things. Because when we see these signs, and we, we, can, we can actually pre prepare ourselves to be sheltered and protected when they start moving in on us. Okay? Read. And upon the earth, the stress of nations, mm -hmm. with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, mm -hmm. men's hearts failing, failing them for fear. Mm -hmm. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Right. So this is what they're dealing with. So men are, when they do see these particular events, the sun losing this light, the moon not having any light. You understand what I'm saying? Those are going to be indicators that Yeshaya is on his way back. When the stars fall from heaven, you understand? It's going to be the, the, the night sky is going to be totally dark. You understand? So that's going to be an indicator for us to, to tell us that, listen. We don't have much time from this particular point on. Okay, so when this occurs, then we, we really have to start concerning ourselves. All right? Because none of this stuff is going to occur until the tribulation period. Until the tribulation, exactly. Until the tribulation period take place. So after the tribulation period, then maybe, yeah, I, I, I may look up in the sky and start examining things at, after that point. But right now, there's no need for us to start going up into the stars and trying to read them, read them to determine certain things. Okay, everything we need to determine when it comes to prophetics is in the scriptures. Okay, the Most High gave it through, gave it to us through prophecy and through uh, testimony of the prophets. All right, it's more than that. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verse twenty-seven. And they shall, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming. Right, so that's when he's going up here, read. In a cloud with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads. Stop right there. See, he said, and when these things become, begin to come to pass, then what? Then look up. Then look up. <laughs> Not before. Then you want to start looking up and examining things. All right, read. And lift up your heads. For your redemption draw it not. Right, and that's when we want to know that our redemption is drawing now. But they're putting up these videos, these video productions, and they got us thinking it's it's gonna be any day now. You understand? So we have to be careful with that. Okay? So uh, let's move on. Um I'm sorry I'm bouncing around. Like I said, I'm trying to touch base on the different facets of what of what I of what I see people talking about online and, and, and discussing. Because like I said, you know, we get emails on this stuff. What about this, brother? What about that? You understand? And people are going into the stars. And it's sad that it's a lot of people who, who just came out of the uh, 
this is not an, a, an attack against people who came out of the church and dealing with Christianity, but that was the teaching. Those teachings are heavily uh, induced on us in the church. You understand to deal with the, uh, astrology and to deal with the, uh, those star uh, concept theories of prophecy, but it's it's, it's wrong. Okay, so uh, let's um, let's get Second Corinthians the eleventh chapter. These are just still some preliminary scriptures that I just want to cover because I mentioned about the church because they penetrated the church. OK, these gatekeepers. OK, they penetrated the church with, with, with these with these doctrines, just like the rapture deception. All those things were penetrated and targeted towards the church because that's where the majority in the book of our people are at. A lot of us came out of the church. OK, so they got they, They're not really worried about us too much. They got a target. They want to target the masses. OK, so they know the masses is in harlot houses. So that's when it comes to pushing different philosophies and, and ideologies. The church is definitely targeted in this uh, particular case. All right. Second uh, Corinthians 11. Let's start from verse uh, 13. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers. Right. So that's what they are. That's what these people are. They're false apostles because they're trying to stand in the, Christ, in, in the place of the disciples and Yeshua. OK, they're trying to stand in our place. OK, we're the one that's bringing forth the prophecies of the Most High through these scriptures. We're the one that's been called to bring forth this, this, this understanding. All right. Read. For such are false apostles, mm -hmm. deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into apostles, the apostles of Christ. That's what they're doing. That's what these people, that's what this, these evil angels have done. They transform themselves into the apostles of Christ by having the spirit work with different people in society or in different uh, at different levels of Christianity and these different uh, uh, Christian uh, religious organizations. All right. Read. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And no more of them. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right. So Satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. As I said before, through these different religious in institutions, they were able to penetrate these institutions and establish and set up their protocol. OK, which is which is falsehood and deceit and deception. All right. Read. Verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Right. So now we think that these people are ministers of righteousness because, you know, they, they're well-known figures in the Christian world. OK, so we value their opinion because they, you know, the Hagees and, and who else? You know, there's a lot of different people mm -hmm. that's, you understand, that's, that's uh, so-called, um, what word am I looking for? They're pre, excuse me? Right, exactly. Thank you. Prophecy experts. You can't tell these guys that 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 you know they're not divine and that what they're telling the people is coming directly from the Most High. All right. Read. Whose end shall be according to their works. Right. So that end is going to be according to their works when they get judged. All right. Read. Verse sixteen. I say again, let no man think me a fool. Okay, let's sit on that. I pause. Sorry. Let's move on. I just wanted to kind of touch base on that a little bit. Let's get uh, 2 Corinthians. And uh, I'm sorry, let's get Galatians, the first chapter. Let me get another uh, <clears throat> key scripture about what these particular men do. Galatians, the Because they're using the Bible to do it. And then also get get um, um, Ecclesiastes the eleven chapter I believe. Let me get it real quick. I still want Galatians though, but I want to get something because I, I was I was touching base on on some of the scriptures that they use. Mm -hmm. One moment. Read Galatians and start from verse Galatians, start from verse one. Galatians chapter one, verse one. Mm -hmm. 
Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yeshua Christ, and the Most High, the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from the Most High, the Father, and from our Lord Yeshua Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, mm -hmm. according to the will of the Most High and our Father, to whom be glory forever and mm -hmm. ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. I marvel that you are, so, you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Right. So Paul marveled at this. Paul didn't understand how people were so easily persuaded when you have the scriptures. Christ, the scriptures say what they say. How can you let someone come with a video presentation and totally just take away all the scriptural understanding that you have? But that's what happens. These these productions be so elaborate that you actually forget about certain scriptures that you know mm -hmm. that totally goes against what they teach you. But you, it's so, you know, it's, it's, it's tight. The, the production is, is, you understand, it's like a Hollywood blockbuster. <laughs> it is. You know. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Which is not another, but there be. So that's key. So he said the gospel and, the, and what they're teaching is not necessary that it's another gospel. Because the gospel is still the same. But after they get finished twisting the scriptures and making different relations to things, you understand, you, you believe that is that that is true. Once they give you that spin or that analogy. Read. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So that's what they're doing. They're troubling us and they're confusing us and deceiving us by perverting the gospel. By, by not bringing out the correct understanding of the scripture or the content of the scripture. Okay? By them doing that, they're, 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 uh, they're actually perverting it. Okay? Read. Verse 8. But though we are an angel from heaven. Though what? But though we are an angel from heaven. Right. Preach any other gospel unto you. So why did Paul make this statement? Why did he say that? Because Paul understood the possibility of how angels how angels would come and deceive people because they've been doing it since the beginning of the time. Mm -hmm. So Paul understood that. So Paul was giving people fair warning the way Yeshua gave us fair warning in Matthew the 24th chapter and Luke the 21st chapter. He gave us warning if, if him or anybody or angel from heaven come and tell you anything different not to believe it. Okay, and all this information is, is as I said before, is, is fallen angel information and fallen angel teachings. All right, when, like, as I said before, most of you are familiar with, um, with Enoch, the book of Enoch, the eighth chapter. Okay, when you get time, read that. Okay, read. Verse 8 mm -hmm. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any gospel unto you. Then that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Right. Let him be a curse. So let's get uh, Ecclesiasticus. And one moment. Let me find it. I didn't find it a few moments ago. Get Ecclesiasticus, the 12th chapter. And um, let's start from verse 8. Because this is what they do. This is why they use... Uh, Certain scriptures, okay, to bring forth their understanding because these men, they, 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 they're skillful. They're skillful. They have experience. They know the Bible or they know certain key Bible references and scriptures that they can use to get you to see their point. Okay? And the scriptures that they use, when you really dug into it and go into it, it has nothing to do with what they're talking about. But if you're unlearned and you're not really studied, you'll fall for it. And unfortunately, I hate to say this, in Christianity, you know, they don't really teach you to, 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 uh, to go through this, this Bible as far as precepts are concerned and really go throughout the content of the Bible the way that you need to to get the, 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 pre the, the, uh, the precept understanding. OK, so let's start from verse uh, eight. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse eight. Mm -hmm. A friend cannot cannot be known. In prosperity. No, uh, I'm sorry. In Ecclesiastes, in the Bible, I apologize. I didn't mean to uh, say the Apocrypha. Yes, sir. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. You see that? So because these preachers are wise, and these uh, televangelists and these uh, um, prophecy prophets, you call them? Okay? Because they're wise, and they, they use certain wisdom to deceive the people. Okay? Me. He still taught the people knowledge. So because he had a little wisdom, he still went on and taught the people knowledge. And that's what they do because they have some knowledge of the scriptures and of the Bible that continue to teach people lies and deception. Read. Yeah. He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. You see that? So he gave good heed and he sought out, meaning he searched certain particular scriptures that he wanted to, that they wanted to use in bringing forth these particular uh, productions and concepts when they come up with these these teachings and these doctrines. Okay, read verse ten. The preacher sought out to find the preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright. You see that? So he sought out acceptable words. They seek out acceptable words, words that they think that you're going to be susceptible to, mm. that they're going to be able to, you know, show you, and you'll say, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see it now and I realize it. This is what they did. That's why they use certain scriptures. Luke 21, Matthew, the second chapter about the star. And then they show you a clip of a star flying through the heavens and things like that. All that stuff, it gets you. It draws you and pulls you in. OK, read. Even the words of truth. Even the words of truth, because what, what they're showing you scripture wise, it is true. It's just the way that they're describing it and the interpretation that they're putting on it is not true. OK, so they use that as an advantage. OK, when they put these these uh, these videos together and these teachings, read verse 11. The words of the wise are as goals and as nails fastened by the master's assemblies, read on, which are given from one shepherd mm -hmm. and further by these, my son, be admonished. That's interesting, too, because the, the, the stronghold is given by one shepherd. That one shepherd was the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Because they came with the basis of, of, uh, of this modern concept of Christianity that the church is following, okay? So it was one, it came out of one particular branch and then these teachings go throughout the, the earth to different locations, to different churches, okay? Read. Verse 12, and further, by these my son, be admonished. Mm -hmm. Of many making books, there is no end. Okay, so in this case, right here, they're not making books. They're making videos. Because it's never an end to all these videos. I mean, you go online, it's, it's just video after video. Every so many months, mm -hmm. it's always a new video and a new concept of something that's out there. And we have to watch out for that. Okay, so I wanted to bring that correlation, that revelation. Okay, read. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. And that's what happened. Much study becomes a weariness of the, of the flesh because we're constantly watching this video, watching that video, watching this video, watching that video. We have to be careful with that. There's nothing wrong with, with, uh, with, with watching videos and trying to expose yourself to correct information. Everybody is trying to know. OK, everybody wants to wants to, to know a little bit more than they have. They want to cross examine things and stuff like that. All that is, un, is, is understandable. But you can't use uh, videos or, or YouTube or Google as a barometer. You have to use the Bible. You have to use the scriptures. OK, let the most high word stand. All right. Read. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear the most high. And keep his commandments. Right, so that's the conclusion. Fear the most high and let's keep his commandments. All right? Let's move on. Let's get uh, 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. Second Corinthians, uh, let's start from two and uh, Second Corinthians two and eleven. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are Can not. Can you start up above that? Yeah, verse ten. 
To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, mm -hmm. for your sakes forgave I it, in the person of Christ, that Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Right, so that's the point I wanted to, to, uh, to touch base on. Okay, so this is how they do, how Satan does have an advantage over us. This is how we get this, get deceived because we're dealing with this with this false information. So this uh, device that they're using now, it's a modern device, but nonetheless, it's something that they're actually really using to to uh, you understand to persuade us and to have us move in a certain way. So we have to be careful about that. We cannot be ignorant of, of Satan's attempts. OK, he has darts, many darts. The scripture speaks about the wiles of the devil. He's coming from all angles. It's a war. And in a war, you don't play fair. You play dirty. Anything goes. So whatever he can get us at, he's going to get us. OK, and they, they know how popular uh, YouTube is. They know how popular, you know, uh, social media is. They know how popular these things are. So they're using it against us. OK, so, you know, the Internet thing, it, it, it had its benefits, but it has its detriment, too, for us. And we got to be careful with that. All right. Let's, let's sit on that. I want to move on a little bit. Let's get. Um, OK, let's get Acts, the 14th chapter. First, get Colossians 2 and 8. Mm -hmm. Just want to touch base on some, you know, some of the small preliminary scriptures. OK. Give me a minute. So Paul is warning us the same way Yeshia warned us, same way Mark gave his warning. Okay, read that. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Be, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. We have to beware. We have to be mindful. We have to look out for these things because that's the intent. That's what they want to do. Okay, they want to fill us up with different uh, philosophical viewpoints and things like that. Let's, let's get filled. Christ said, that, let's fill up off of the scriptures. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's fill up off of that. Let's embrace that. All right? Read. After, after the tradition of men and the rudiments of this world. Right. So after the traditions of men and not after uh, the, uh, excuse me, read that again. After the tradition of men. Mm -hmm. After the rudiments of this world. Right. Stick from the top again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Mm -hmm. After the tradition of men. Right. So that's what people do. Okay. So a lot of these teachings are necessarily really not old teachings that's out there too. A lot of these teachings are traditional Christian teachings. Okay. That, that was infiltrated. That was placed into the Christian doctrine. Doctrine. Back during the early 1900s and 1800s, a lot of these teachings go way back when it comes to Christianity. So these teachings have been has been uh, uh, fused, okay, in our churches, okay, from these uh, seminary and theology schools. So us realizing this and knowing this now is more of a reason for us to really just start being mindful and more careful about the information that we receive, okay. Read. After the rudiments of this of the world, mm -hmm. and not after Christ. Right. And these things are they're after the world. They're after society. They're not after Christ. These things are after man. So everything must come after Yeshua. That's what that's what Paul is saying. Is telling us. So we have to go into these scriptures, okay, and find out what he said versus us concentrating and putting focus on focusing on what man is saying, okay, and telling us, if, especially when they're coming out of the scriptures. All right. So let's move on. Let's now let's go to Acts. OK, we're getting ready to. We'll close it up real soon. Acts 14. And. Um, right here. Excuse me. Let's start from verse 12. No, let's start from verse uh, verse 8. Okay, because I want to 
you know, Elder Recall speaks a lot about how we're going back under Rome. Okay, and that's that's the truth. We are going back under Rome. Rome is, is, is eventually is going to become uh, part of the world governing power again. So not only are they going to uh, are we going are they trying to put us under Rome uh, politically and government wise, but they're going to put us back under the Roman gods again. Okay, they really been doing it. A lot of us been under the Roman gods through that uh, through through the teachings that they have that they have uh, pushed in Christianity. Okay, but they're going to they want to actually really put us literally back under these guys again and have us worshiping these guys openly. Mm -hmm. 